welcome back to my YouTube channel and I hope whatever you're doing you're having a lovely morning, afternoon and evening. Today we're going to make mushroom wellington and we're going to start off by making the puff pastry. Now what you need for that is 150 millilitres of cold water, 250 grams of sift flour, and 250 grams of butter, preferably unsalted butter. Now what you've got to do first is sift the 250 grams of flour and then what you do is you put it in the fridge just to keep cold. It's good to have a, the bowl is good to be cold and the flour as well because that's what it will give it it's flaky layered pastry so just stick it in the fridge for about five ten minutes and then bring it back out for the next stage what you can do as well if you're short for time this is like what i did because i made this on christmas day for christmas dinner is you can actually buy puff pastry in from any supermarket so if you are short in time because the one thing about making puff pastry is it's very time consuming it does take a lot of time it takes about an hour because you need to keep pulling it back in the fridge to keep it cold because like i said that's what will give it the texture the flaky the layered texture so you can get it in which is a lot easier because that's what i did christmas day because there's no way christmas morning i was going to be making puff pastry so i brought it in you can make it the day before because they usually say it's better to make it the day before and leave it in the fridge overnight but i thought i would make it from scratch and while it's chilling in the fridge i'll talk about an album that i was just listening to before i made this video and it came in the post yesterday, I'm really pleased because this is an album that I used to listen to a lot as a child. This is the one that my parents brought. So it takes me back to sort of my childhood days and it's this album, it's called Soft Rock. And there's some really classic bands on this album. So listening to it, I do feel a bit nostalgic. It's got like Eric Clapton on. And this song was actually my first dance song at the wedding with my husband. It's actually Eric Clapton, Wonderful Tonight, which was our first dance song. It's got Pretenders on there, it's got Cher, Roxette, it's got Brian Ferry on it, Robert Plant, Fleetwood Mac, Mr Big, Big Country. So there's a lot of classic songs on here and it's one that our parents used to play a lot when we got, when we first got our CD player, which was really exciting. I think it was about 95, 96 when my parents actually bought a CD player because before then my dad had one of these massive LP players it was like a massive wooden one and it used to live under our staircase it was one of the ones that had like a cassette tape slash LP player FM radio so it was really exciting when we went shopping I think it was to Dixon's or Curry's and we got our first CD player so it was quite nice when we started getting CDs in and one of the first CDs that I got, and I can't believe I'm going to admit this, I actually still have it somewhere in Iraq. It was Peter Andre, Mysterious Girl. That was the first CD I bought in my pocket money. And it was it's the original one with the pull-out poster. I can't believe I'm admitting that to you. But yes, my first CD I got was a Peter Andre CD. But when I was at primary school, he was quite a big deal. Everybody fancied him. And I admit that I did when I was younger. <laughs> so that was the first CD I ever got. I think this might be one of the first CDs my parents got. So it does take back to a specific point in time. So it's really nice to listen to. Um, I would have it on in the background, but unfortunately, um, I'll probably get copyright striked if I have this album playing. But I'm now going to bring the flour out of the fridge so we can get on to our next stage. I just thought quickly before I get the flour out of the fridge, I actually found it. This is the uh, my first CD I ever bought with my pocket money. And this, I totally forgot I had this, is actually his first album. It's called Natural. So yeah, I even had his album as well. But let's get the flour out of the fridge. 
Hello and welcome back. The next stage is we've got the flour. Now what you're going to do is you need a knife for this. You're going to take the chunks of butter and put it in to the flour. So make sure it gets well covered with the flour. So mix it in. So you've got to keep doing that until all the butter's in there, well coated with flour. Just a little bit of time, don't take too much. So we're going to mix it in. Ooh. Try not to make a mess everywhere. There we go, I'm going to coat it in with the flour. Okay, next little butter. So like I said, it is 250 grams of butter to match the 250 grams of flour as well. So we've got to mix it all in. They do say to cut the butter into, into cubes to make it easier just to mix it in with the flour. As you can see, the man's a bit lumpy at the moment because we will be adding water. So we've got to keep doing that. Oh. Going back to um, Peter Andre, which I was mentioning earlier, I did actually see him in concert. I think it was about 97. I went with some school friends and we went to, it was Brighton. He was performing at uh, the Brighton um, Theatre and he came down in a cage. I think he was wearing like some gold suit. He came down like a bird cage. Oh yeah, he was actually quite good. He was really good fun. He was the first concert I actually ever went to. So it was my first taste of a music concert. The second concert I went to was, I think it was... Texas and now they were brilliant and she was really funny and my mum I can't remember the name of the lead singer who's the lead singer of Texas Jamie oh my husband doesn't remember either he's actually filming by the way so like I said my last Hello. video <laughs> yeah, look, there we go like I said my last video it's probably better to get him to film so I can actually concentrate on what I'm doing so it's hard to film and still at the same time, I think it's Sh somebody, Te Shirley something or other. Oh, there we go, there's a can. Shirley some. I can't remember her name. I should remember her name, but she was brilliant. She was really funny, really funny. My mum actually had her hair washed by the lead singer of Texas before she was famous. And my mum remembers her talking about her band. And that was an album they got as well, was uh, Texas' first album that she did. And she was brilliant. She was so funny. I'd like to see her again actually. We haven't heard much from her actually, but she was so she was so funny. And also I've seen Gabriella. She was very good as well. But one of my favourite bands that I saw, and this is a band that I grew up with and that my dad played a lot on the LP play I was talking about, was uh, Fleetwood Mac and it was only four of them performing. This was back in 2009, 10. It was only four of them and um Oh, I've got the name now. Um, she was in the audience. Um, oh, I've forgotten the name. So I know it's. I'm trying to remember now, but she was in the audience, so she wasn't singing. Stevie Nicks. No, Stevie Nicks was performing. It was the other, the other female oh. singer. Oh, my mind's gone blank now. But she was in the audience, and Stevie Nicks sang her song that she wrote, "Landslide," and dedicated it to her. And, um, oh, Lindsay Buckingham on the guitar, when he did Big Love, it was just him and his guitar. Oh, it was amazing. I'll have to upload the video. I've got it somewhere on my computer, the video of him. So I've got another channel as well, which is just under my name, Rebecca AD. And it's, um, it's just music videos, because I film whenever I go to concert, because me and my husband are big music people. As you can see from our collection of CDs over there, as you can see, oh, we're massive music people, so we do go to concerts quite a bit. Uh, the last concert we went to was last year. We went to Glass, not Glastonbury. Did I say Glastonbury for? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> That's one concert I would love to go to is Glastonbury. It was actually Cornbury Festival, and Katie Tunstall was playing, and she was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Again, she was somebody who was really funny as well. They had, was it Katie Tunstall? Who was the other people performing? Um, somebody, um, it was somebody who's now a singer for the, um, the uh, uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. He's a singer for that now. Oh, oh brilliant. 
absolutely brilliant. So I recommend trying to go to Cornbury Festival because it's really good. It wasn't that expensive. Trevor Horn's band. That's it, Trevor Horn's band. I need to, I think I've got some videos up there that I need to upload as well. I haven't been very good at uploading videos. You're wondering channel. why you re recognise the name. He did a song called Video Killed the Radio Star. Oh yes, Video Killed the Radio Star. I love that song. That's very 80s. With his band at the time, whose name I've forgotten. Oh yeah, the, not the Wiggles. Muggles? Might be Muggles, but then... No, that's Harry be. Potter. <laughs> oh goodness me, yeah. Oh yeah, but Video Killed the Radio Star is very good. I was going to say, we could ask Alexa. Yes, we've got an Alexa up there. Alexa, who sang Video Killed the Radio Star? Video Killed the Radio Star is by the Buggles. Oh, we go, the Buggles. We were close. The Wuggles, yeah. the, the Muggles, we were close. But yes, it's very useful having a, a Alexa there. She can be useful at times. So now that we've mixed... The uh, butter into the flour. It's got to be coated with flour. It's Keen was the other band we saw as well at oh, yes. Cornbury Festival. Keen. They were quite big at one point and then they sort of disappeared. Now the butter's covered in flour. We've got to pour, pour the water in slowly. There we go. Mix it in with the knife. With the water. So we pour the water in slowly, again, just do what we do with the butter, mix it in, keep working it in until it's all worked in. Once we've worked all the water in, we have to then use our hands to get it into a, into like a sausage type shape. And then we've got to put it in the fridge and it's got to go in the fridge for 50 minutes. So it's got to chill again. So there's a lot of chilling process with this. That's why it can be quite time consuming and why people prefer to actually buy to buy inks. It's a lot easier. But sometimes it's quite nice to make it from scratch because you get a sense of pride when you've done something from scratch as well. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> there we go. We're getting there. And it's good to have some... <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Oh, it's good to have some flour to put on the work surface as well because when there we go there's all the water down there's no kneading involved so do not knead the, the dough there's no kneading involved with this so we don't need to knead it but now we've worked in so you will need to put some flour on the surface because otherwise it will stick so it is quite as you can see quite sticky at the moment oh. you might need to add a bit more flour Yes, my husband is right, I need to add a bit more flour. Let me get my sift. We'll sift a bit more flour into it. Yes, we're walking down our kitchen. As you can see as well in our kitchen, which is something we are very proud of, especially during this time because all the pubs are closed and we can't go to the pub. It's my sift. We've got our own bar. And this is quite cool as well. We have our little thing and it lights up as well. So it's called Jackie's Bar, which is a play on my name and my husband's name. You probably can't see it at the moment. Maybe the battery's... No, maybe the battery's dead. But yeah, it does say... Oh, there we go. go. So it's Jackie's Bar, and we've got our optics as well. And we actually have... This is something that I wanted. We have our own bell as well. So when it's closing time, we can... Everybody out! <laughs> Bar is now closed. Yeah, it's quite cool. Jamie did this himself. He put all the shelves up and stuff. It is really good and it wasn't actually that expensive. A lot of this came from Amazon. Well, actually, most of it came from Amazon, mm. which is really good. So I need to add a bit more flour into it. So you're quite right. It is. Whoops, a little bit wet. So we won't go too mad with the flour. So we'll just. There we go. Sift it in. Get our trusty knife and mix it in. Oh, I am making a mess. That's a trouble with flour. It does get go everywhere. Not just flour. 
Very funny. This is looking a lot better now. Look at that. It's looking a lot better. We will need to flower the surface. So I'm going to get my spoons for. Pointing out, so I'm gonna flower at the surface. So, this will have to go in the fridge, like I said, oh, for about 15 minutes. Oh, gosh. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we will wrap it up in clean film. So it'll be about 15 minutes, it can be a bit longer, and then we'll go on to the next stage, which is where you'll need your rolling pin. So we start rolling it out, and that's when we start creating the puff pastry layers. So there we go. I am going to go and wash my hands. I might sprinkle a bit of flour on top as well, just so it doesn't stick to the clean film because that would be fun. Let me go wash my hands while she's washing her hands. Just in case you're wondering, yes, we have vodka, pink gin that's nearly out, Malibu, which is my favourite, and Jack Daniels. Which is my favourite. Yes. Nothing Someone has to drink it. No, I'm lying, I like it as well. That's our wine rack. I'm going to sprinkle, I would try sprinkle a bit of flour on the top as well because you don't want it to stick to the cling film. There we go, make sure we stink in an even bit of flour on the sides, pat it down, make sure it's in a nice little sausage shape. I'm just going to wash my hands again. And then what we are going to do is roll it up in a bit of cling film. And it will go in the fridge for, like I said, 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, we'll come back, get it out of the fridge, and we'll make the famous puff pastry layers. There we go. Here. Right. Off we go, we'll wrap it up and in it goes for 50 minutes. So. Our fridge. <laughs> yeah, not very exciting. There we go. We'll come back in 15 minutes. See you in 15 minutes. We're now ready for the next stage. I've got my dough out. So what we're gonna do is I floured the surface and then it's best to flour the rolling pin as well because it's the stage where we're gonna roll it, which will give it its uh, layered texture. So you're gonna roll it out. So to about one centimeter thick, but it doesn't matter if it's not accurate. We're not gonna get a what do you call it, um, a ruler out just to check, but it's best to roll it, it's best to roll it into sort of a square texture, keep it neat, I might put a bit more flour on my... flour the rolling pin there. I'll put a bit more flour on the rolling pin, which I'm going to do, a bit, whoop, bit of flour on top as well, so we're going to try and get sort of a square texture, and going back to what we were talking about earlier, I found out the names of the, the singers that I was trying to figure out. And one of them is, I might be pronouncing her name wrong, but she's a lead singer of Texas. It's Shalene Spatetti. I probably pronounced her surname wrong. And the other one, which I'm not about because I should have known, is Christy McVie. So she's the, one of the other singers in Fleetwood Mac. So you want to try and get a square texture. This is not quite square, so I'm going to fold it in a bit. I'm not out again, so it's not quite square at the moment, which is annoying. 
So I'm going to keep rolling it until we get a square texture and then we're going to start doing the folding. Mm. And when you fold it, you've got to do it four times. So you've got to fold it from the left side, then from the right side, and then roll and pin it out again and then do it again, like I said, um, four times. And then it goes in the fridge for about, um, about an hour. They usually say it's best to do it overnight, to leave it overnight. So I'm just going to try and get it into a nice square. It doesn't matter if it's not a perfect square. You're probably wondering what's sitting behind us. Because you've probably seen it in the video. We have got a pool table, as you can see. Um, my husband is now got to work from home. So he's the one that's working from home. I'm not working from home quite yet, but I might be asked to work from home soon. As you can see, there is a pool table. As you can see, he's been working very, very hard. He's been playing pool most days, probably. <laughs> Oi, I do work <laughs> as well. <laughs> as you can see, he wants to show you on the pool table is <clears throat> his favorite, one of his favourite bands. Status Quo. Who he's seen many times in concert. Yes. <laughs> and if you want to get into Status Quo, God, you got flour on my pool table, woman. <laughs> Sorry. Women. <laughs> oh, if you... I'm going to upside down now. Yeah, if you want to get into Status Quo, this is one of the albums you should get. It's their best of. He's got a bit of everything from their early psychedelic days to um, uh, up to the 25th anniversary. So it, it's got a fair bit of all sort of classics and a bit of other different stuff. <clears throat> And I would, if you can get your hands on it, I'd get your hands on it. Status quo, rock. <laughs> really? They only know four chords. No, right. They know, yes, the joke is they only know three chords, but actually they know quite a few more than that, and they do occasionally use them when they feel like it, on special occasions. There we go. Now the next mm -hmm. thing we're going to do is fold it over. Yeah, uh, <laughs> flower dear. Yes, I'm going to. Yes, I know. We got. Unfortunately, sometimes when using this recipe, it tends to be quite a wet dough. Yes, yeah, so you've got to make <clears> sure <throat> you keep flowering. Yes, it's very important that you keep flowering. It. Sorry, that's the oven beeping. Flower is your friend. It is. And yes, as you can see, the oven's just beeped. I've got it on 240 because it's got to be on quite a high setting. It does take a while to cook as well, which we'll go through when we get to that stage. Yep, that's our oven. So there we go. <clears throat> so I've now made sure I flour it. As Jamie said, flour is your friend, so make sure you keep flouring it. And then what we're going to do next is... How long do you reckon we've had that oven? Three years? Probably, yeah. It's been a good oven, actually. Yeah, not bad for a... Um... It's a reconditioned it's re oven. That's the word I say, reconditioned one. We had to get a reconditioned one because our other oven gave out and we couldn't afford to buy a new oven. Yeah, well what can we say? Uh, <laughs> this, These flats were built by Barrett, so everything was cheap, including, yeah. including the original oven. Yeah, we got a Barrett <clears> home. So now that we've done that, we're going to fold it again, but we're going to fold it the other way now. So, oh. So we've got to do this four times, so we're going to fold it the other way. Again, and roll it out. You've got to try and roll it into another square shape. And just be, and the other thing is, sorry, um, the 15 minutes that you keep it in the fridge for, and I think this was a bit longer than 15 minutes, you can actually give you time to clean the surface. But we're also listening to another band that we saw recently. They played at Oxford, and that was Big Country. And they were brilliant, um, weren't they? They played at they Ox were. They played at Oxford Hall, and that is a very... Town Hall. Oxford Town Hall, sorry, and it's a beautiful hall. And we're listening to Chance, and that's on the Soft Rock album, that I definitely recommend you get, because that's what I grew up on. 
Um, Although they definitely didn't play it soft in Oxford. No, they? they didn't. And we were in the mo- the call it the yeah, mosh pit. You got pit. your first uh, experience of a mosh pit. A mosh pit, yes. It's a bit wild. And there's a lot of uh, people who were, <coughs> who grew up with big country who were going mm. wild. Sadly, so, the front man is no longer with us. Um, yeah, that's quite sad, actually. He unfortunately uh, had a lot of problems with depression and committed suicide. But they're now on their third front man, well, uh, singer, who is quite good. Yeah. He he's not is. really a front man as such. He's, he doesn't, he just sings this particular person whose name I cannot remember off the top of my head. Uh, but he is a good singer. And now the original guitarist, whose son is now in the band, is more the front man and talks to the crowd and jokes and stuff. Yeah, it's fairly good. And talking about sons, we we went to I think it was when was it a few years ago we went to um, Hyde Park. Oh yeah. Um and oh I've never seen Phil Collins before, but we went there because Phil Collins was playing. Phil Collins is amazing. Unfortunately, he injured his hip or something. His back. His back. That was it. And he came on sort of walk it with a walking stick, which is quite sad. It's sad, it, you know, to see him like that. But his son was playing on drums, and it was oh, it was a me- his son was so good on drums, mm. and they did obviously their famous one, which was in the air tonight, and everybody at that exact mm. point, it was amazing to see everybody who did the whole drum thing, you know, when it's like, and they're all doing the drum thing. I have to admit, when you listen to that song, you cannot listen to it without going. I absolutely love Bill Collins. I love Genesis as well. And we really wanted to see him, didn't we? Because they're meant, to, well, they're meant to be on tour this year. Whether it's going to happen now, no, with yeah, everything, but, but, but we were go- we were seeing them, but they're very expensive. The tickets. We couldn't warrant what 178 pound per ticket. I know. I was quite shocked, but they are amazing. Although it was, it was quite nice the fact that Phil Collins only agreed to do it if his son was doing the drums. Yeah, I thought that was nice, and his son's very talented, and I do apologise. But you distance. never know, we might be able to still yeah. go if it gets redone and tickets go on sale again. Or I do apologise, the only trouble with this is dough's quite wet and it's quite hard to work, so I think I've done it four times now. Mm. So you should see, you get a really nice layered effect. I'm going to, um, to flour it again, mm. and if I can, I would like to try and turn it over. If I can. Oh. Luckily, as a bonus, when we went and saw uh, Phil Collins at Hyde Park, um, <clears throat> other people playing that day were uh, Mike Rollerford of Genesis with his oh, yeah. Mike and Mechanics, Mechanics group, so that was good and emotional. Yes. And um, also Blondie. Oh, Blondie's good. She's still got it. And who was the other band? Oh, Case in the Sunshine band yes. was another one. Yep. So I'm just pulling it down. I'm going to pull it. And this is when it goes yeah. in for an hour. So hopefully this will be all right yeah. in an hour's time. Luckily, because uh, I'm partially sighted, I'm able to get disabled tickets for that sort of thing. So we were in the disabled area. So we had a nice yeah. view and uh, we could sit down. Yeah, which is quite nice. Yeah. But the good thing about working for the partnership is there is something called we get something called partnership choice, which means um, we can get discount tickets. That's one of the plus for working, working for the partnership, and um, yeah, which is which is a bonus as well. But unfortunately, I shut John Lewis at the moment, so I'm having to work at Waitrose and Sean White, who is the um, the director or the chairman of the partnership mm. has said that you know we might we might be um asked to sort of stay at home so i'm not really sure what's happening now mm. so i don't know how i'll cope so how are you guys coping if some of you are working from home i'd love to know what you've been doing to cope because it feels weird i'm so used to working that it's definitely going to feel weird mm. being asked to sort of work at home so i'd love to know what you guys have been doing to sort of pass the time try working at home dear that's weird yeah it probably and having is. to be regimented with it yeah i work for a, a company that support people with special needs and i generally deal with an it in they have a, an activity room where they do social stuff but obviously with this going on it's essentially closed so i've been asked to work from home 
doing training and admin tasks. Yeah, he's anything to do with IT. He is, I he's an IT nerd. He is definitely an IT nerd. Anything to do with IT or computers, he's really good with. So if you need any advice or got anything to do with IT, you can know uh, you can put a comment below. He is very good with anything to yes. do with that. And it's very useful having somebody to deal with IT because my answer to everything that doesn't work, especially Windows 10, I hate Windows 10. It's a set it on fire and chuck it out the window. That's my answer to everything. I prefer Windows 10 to Windows 8. Oh, yeah, Windows 8 was chronically bad. <laughs> because they tried to design it, it for a touch screen, even though yeah. you may not have a touch screen when you're using it and it's annoying. I never had Windows. Um... Hence why Windows 10, they bought things back like a proper bloody menu. Yeah, I never <clears> had Windows 8. I went from Windows 7 to Windows 10. My parents mm. did. And I remember I'm going around to visit my mum. She's like, how would you get out the internet? Because there was no exit. Seriously, I had, I, you know, I know a little bit more, you know, when it comes to computers and stuff. So I was like, mum, let me have a look for you, you know. There was no exit button to get out the internet. So we had to do control alt delete a lot. Oh, it was, mm. it was really bad. And they were going to update it. And I think they did. My parents didn't want to say they had updated it. But Windows 10 is chronically slow. So my answer to everything is to say I'm fine, check it out the window, which is probably not the right answer. But I do get very frustrated easily. I can't stand things that are really slow. So that's why it's good to be mad at somebody who's, I, who's good with IT. Mm. Because, you know, he can solve anything. He's really good with things like that. So, yeah, put a comment below if you have any... Um, and we might just like to add, the first time you used Windows 10 was on your original laptop that was a Windows 7 laptop, wasn't it? And we updated it, or you yeah, updated it to see got... what it was like, and it was yeah. working at a snail's pace. But I've, got, I've still got a new laptop, and it's still slow. It, yeah, I know, so <laughs> I should sort that out. Anyway, you've got two of my laptops you can play with. Yeah, so I've got two of his laptops, because he's got one for work and one which is his personal one as well. Yes. Um, but yeah, pop a comment below. And... Technically speaking, I have two laptops for work, but one isn't at the flat yeah. and a couple more at work that are for me yeah anyway but um yeah pop a comment below. and also pop a comment below if you've got any tips on how to sort of what to do at home you've probably still got quite a bit to do with the flat as well i've still got a bit of painting to do here and there because we're we're still getting there with the flat oh as you can see our sitting room's done we just got the um bathroom and spare room and the spare room and our bedroom that needs off. it's i'll show you why not it's, yes, as you can see, no, you can't see, there is stuff, mainly my stuff, I might add, my toys. And of course, if you want to check out my channel for reviews, rants, and all sorts of stuff, just search JBot1983 or Darkness James 1983 depending on what YouTube wants to find it under. Uh, but yeah, this is the spare room at the moment. It's a bit of a mess. It is coming together, unfortunately, with this... Um, some friends of ours <clears throat> that were helping us obviously can't come over and help us so it's left us in the middle of putting flat pack stuff together and putting up a blind hence the pillow so nobody actually sees all the stuff that's in here uh, so yeah oh that was good and there's polis styrene everywhere yeah look at the door for a minute and that giant stack of my stuff. I'll deal with that in a minute. Stay. Let's go back to Mickey. Hello. Ow! <laughs> As I walk into the snooker table. Hello. Now I folded it up. What we're going to do is, it's going to sit in the fridge for an hour. Preferably. That's the beer supply. Yeah, preferably it should be overnight, but but they they say minimum of an hour. So we're going to stick it in there. I'm going to come back. Hello and welcome back. We're here for the uh, final stage of the puff pastry. I have got bacon sitting in front of me. Okay. Make you look nice. You had flour on your face, dear. Oh, sorry. Um, and I've also floured my rolling pin. What I'm doing is, is I'm rolling it out in my baking tin, ready to put in the oven. So I'm going to put it in the oven for about, say, 10 minutes. I've got it on for 240, so I'm going to cook it for about 10 minutes. 
I'm just turning it over in here. So it fills out my baking tin. Now once it's cooked, we'll get onto the ingredients side of it, which I'll go through with you in the next stage of the video. So I'm just rolling it out. We're gonna do it into sort of a rectangle shape. I'm just taking a few bits from this bit just to pad it there a bit so it fills out a bit more in this section. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect, I know I shouldn't, but I'm taking a few bits just because I want to pad out certain sections. But it doesn't matter if it's not perfect you are going to be eating it after all so it's not it's not perfect it will be okay so let's roll it out a bit more that should be okay just to go in the oven Just smoothing down the sides a bit. So we're going to stick it, like I said, in the oven for about 10 minutes just to pre-cook, as we say. That should be alright, shouldn't it, Jamie? Perfect. Perfect. So it's going to go in the oven for 10 minutes. I'm going to use my Alexa. So Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. Come yeah, back Alexa's to... sexist. Oh, very funny. Um, we'll see you in 10 minutes. Bye. Bye. Hello and welcome back to the next stage of the video. We're now going to put all in the pan, so I've got it onto about four. And like I mentioned in my previous video, if you watched it, we have got an induction hob, so it does heat up a lot quicker. So we are going to put a bit of oil in there. Whoop. And then we're going to... For anyone with an induction hob, it's on four. Yes, it's on about four. There we go, so we'll turn it that way. Always keep the handle away. Yes. Because obviously um, if something knocks into it, they'll spill all of them. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna cut the mushrooms now, which is gonna go in there. Mm. One thing I want to say is when you're cutting stuff, and I have seen people, when they cut, have their fingers out and slice. Now I'm gonna mention about that because of the nice slips, you're going to chop your fingers off, which is not pleasant no. and you don't wanna end up in the uh, the emergency room so yeah. always when you're cutting it doesn't matter what food you're cutting always have your fingers in like a fist and hold it down like that because if you do accidentally knife slips all you're going to do is graze your knuckles yes. and you might cut yourself slightly but at least you're not going to end up in the emergency room so make sure always that you have your fingers in no matter what you are cutting regarding food it doesn't matter if it's not neat cuts there we go, we've got a few bits there. We're gonna cut another one. Again, have your knuckles in. And I have heard stories where, don't ask me why, when people are cutting and they have a tea towel over what they're cutting, and they have the knife under it and they cut, and I have heard a story where somebody actually was cutting because they couldn't see what they're doing because the tea towel's over it, they sliced their finger off. Ouch. Yes, not pleasant. So always have it, your fingers in like a fist and also if you have pans like ours with removable handles 
Put the handle on before you put it on the fucking hob. It hurts. Yes. Pardon my French. Yes, please don't swear. Yeah, we're going to cut quite a few. Of, whoops. Quite a few. Somebody didn't give me warning. Oh, yes, I do apologise about that. I realise I need the handle on there, so I, I do apologise, darling. So we're going to cut again. Don't worry, that's just our oven beeping. I will sort that out. It's our oven beeping. Whoops. There we go. It's our oven beeping. Oh. Don't worry, I'll sort that out in a second. Oh yeah. I thought it was the hop because the hop's saying low. No, it's fine. For no reason. No, it's just the other side, don't worry. So I'm going to cut a few more. I think this should be about enough. Before I put it in the pan... What temperature do you want it on there? Oh, 240. So, whoop. That way. That way. Thank you. You can leave the stalks on the mushrooms, it's absolutely mm. fine. As long as you wash them first. You mentioned that. Yes, always always wash your mushrooms first they're nature's sponges yes always wash you them have no first. idea what's got into them yes always wash first i did forget to mention that there we go that should be enough so we're going to salt what you call the term is saute the mushrooms well one rogue one getting out there and then the next thing we're going to do oh they're trying to they're trying to escape Yeah, go on. So we're just going to stir the mushrooms, keep stirring them. Next thing I'm going to do is, we put this to one side, so I'm going to have it like that. It's to season with salt and pepper. So, uh, good question at this point. Have you uh, greased that pan? Yes, there's oil in there. Right. Just yeah. checking for our viewers. Yes, I have oiled it, yes. Besides, you filmed me oiling it at the beginning, remember? Anyway, salt and pepper. So it's a pinch of salt and pepper. I know you see them for salt, but it is a pinch of salt and pepper. And look, it's uh, the, the pepper mill is a Scottish Terrier. And my mum actually bought these. This one, unfortunately, is empty of salt, so I need to refill it. But this is a West Highland Terrier, mm. which are two of my favourite doggies. And they're so cute. My mum bought me them as like, when I moved into my first home. This was my moving in present. Maybe one day we'll get a real one. I'd love to. I think they're really cute. So anyway, put it to one side. I'm gonna add some red onions. You can buy, obviously, onions whole, but I, this is Rachel's crispy fried onions. Hang on, show it again. Oh, sorry, with Rachel's fried onions, which I'm gonna sprinkle on top. Oh, if I can get into the thing. Come on, man. There we go. So I'm going to finish it off. There we go. There we go. Might as well finish it off. There we go. And then what we're going to do is add a little bit of garlic. Now this is... I'll show you to the camera. You don't want to add too much of garlic because you don't want to over flavour it. What we're using is easy on the chopped garlic ingredients, but you don't want to. Well, yes, obviously, because I work for the partnership. I shouldn't really be showing any other <laughs> brand names. But yeah, you don't want too much garlic. So that should be about enough. Because you add too much, it will overpower it. So you do not want too much. Are you feeling all right? Very funny. Yeah. So you wanna... She likes garlic a lot. Yes, I do like garlic, but you don't want... Oh, it's gone road again. So this is nearly pretty much done, actually, because you don't want to sauté it too long. There we go. If only you had television. <laughs> yes, very funny. Next thing we are going to do now is we're going to take it off now, because that's about done. 
whoops I'm going to take it off and we're going to turn it off because we don't I'm going to bring this too hot and we're going to start layering it oh you, you made a mess yes it'll be fine okay I'll wipe it down after the best thing to do is because you want to keep the flavor on there is to use this we're going to start laying it from the bottom Ooh. No. There we go. Ooh. So we're going to spread it out a bit. Very funny. And then we're going to get the mozzarella. So there we go. Spread it out a bit. So keep it spread it out. And then we are going to get the mozzarella. So I've got two boxes of mozzarella, and we're going to get some nuts as well to sprinkle on the top, and some truffle oil. Okay, so we've got the nuts, these are sort of mixed nuts, and what I've done is, I bash them down with the end of the rolling pin. As you can see, it doesn't matter if it's not too, and then we're going to sprinkle, we're going to save some for the top, but we're going to sprinkle some over there as well, so it gives it a nice crunchy texture. Sprinkle a bit more in. <laughs> there we go. Next thing we're going to do is we've got the cheese. Now we've got mozzarella. Now we're going to take it out, we're going to break up the mozzarella, but we do not want the liquid because we're going to get rid of the liquid because otherwise if there's too much liquid on there, you will get a soggy bottom up. Mary Berry says... You don't want a soggy bottom. No, Mary Berry does not like soggy bottom. So we just tip out the liquid. There we go. We'll do the same with the other one as well. I think I've opened that one. No, I haven't. Get my trusty scissors. Mind fingers. Ah. And we're going to tip out this liquid as well. Goes up. <laughs> oh! Ow! Ow! Oh, he's knocking stuff over. Ignore him. <laughs> Joking. Right, what we're going to do is. How can you ignore me? I know. Oh, so we're going to break it up so we get. Make sure we've got evenly spread of cheese throughout the. Nothing. That you just tear up. Yeah, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. Rustic style. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect, does it? And then the other one as well. Mm. There we go. Oh, and uh, and the next thing we're going to need is the truffle oil. So this is the truffle oil. This is truffle oil, and you don't need too much of it. No. So don't go mad. So you're going to go Sashi. catch your capsule, and you're going to sprinkle it along. So you probably need about... <laughs> that should be enough. Yes. So you've got two capsules. You don't want to go mad. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to fold it over. Hello and welcome back. I've taken out the oven. So like I said, oh, the oven for about 30 minutes. I wouldn't recommend 40 minutes, but keep an eye on it every 10 minutes just to make sure that it's absolutely fine. So it looks a bit messy. I've cut into it already. So this is the finished product, which we're going to be eating with our mashed potato, which I've used up. As you can see, cheese oozes out, which is what you want. There we go, that's my portion. So there we go. So I hope you... I hope you either decide to make it and let me know what you think. So please do comment below and let me know what you think if you did make it and how it went and how you found it. Like I said, if you don't want to make it from scratch, 
you can buy it in you can get it in any supermarket puff pastry it's completely up to you as often as it is time consuming because you have to do the folding process oh very funny jamie but yeah that's what we're going to be eating right now yes it is getting on a bit um thank you so much for watching this video i really do appreciate it if you want to no pressure like and subscribe if you want to i will be doing some more cooking videos in the future thank you so much for watching and before i go i was going to mention because i love cooking i've got my recipe book here and it's a great thing to have whenever you do cook recipes because i do have a look online for certain recipes but i always make it my own i never follow it exactly you customize it i like to customize it it's fun that way but you can get these books anywhere you know probably sell them on Amazon. I think I've got this one when I was in London. These are my recipe books, not completely filled out yet. I will go to this one. So as you can see, I always write down whenever I make the recipe, vegetarian sausage casserole, perla vegetable stew, and my mushroom wellington recipe. <laughs> there you go. So yes, it is a very handy book to have. And again, thank you for watching. I do want to go and eat my dinner now. I'm hungry now after making it. Thank you so much for watching it and stay safe. Uh, have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.